and welcome to part four in our AI tutorial series. In the last episode, we started taking a look at the perception system. And in that, we had a little brief glimpse of decorators. In this episode, we're going to go through decorators in a little bit more detail, talking about how they work, what they do, and what settings they have available to them, as well as how to create your own. So let's jump in and get started. So previously, we mentioned decorators uh, when we looked at senses. So let's go into our behavior tree and you see we've got two decorators already assigned over here. But what are they? So decorators are basically add-ons that will allow or block the flow into that branch or node. The way I always think of it is like a gate. So it sits on top of this thing. So that's the first thing that gets hit and it's a condition. It will check to see if it allows it through or not. Now, the one we've been using is the blackboard base condition, which is a quite a useful one. It's basically lets us check to see a blackboard key and see what its value is. And if that value is a conditional value, then we can make it work for that. Uh, now, but there are many others. So if we were to right click on any node and go to add decorator, you'll see a load of decorators already made here. So let's go through in a little bit more detail about some of the key ones that I find very useful. So first of all, we've got Blackboard base conditions. On Blackboard base condition, over here, you've got Blackboard key and key query, which we mentioned last time. This allows you to set a key and whether or not it should be set or not set. Now, if you're using a float value or integer or any other value like that, this will allow you to also check if it's equal to, greater than, less than, and so on and so forth. And that really does allow you to check those values in greater detail. And furthermore, that also relates back to Notify Observer. Now, Notify Observer will be on results change or value change. Now, when you're dealing with something like this, it doesn't really matter which one you pick. But if you're doing things with numbers, it's very important, the difference. When you're dealing with numbers, on value change means it's when the value just changes to any number, doesn't really matter. And then on result change basically means whenever this changes from being true or false, essentially. And that's the blackboard base condition. Another useful one, we're going to go into Add Decorator and we're going to go into Cooldown. Cooldown basically blocks this node being used after being executed for a, a certain amount of time. And that amount of time is determined over here on the cooldown time, five seconds by default. So when it hits it, it will fail after five seconds. Another one is going to be is at location. You can click on this and you can determine whether or not something is within range or something else. So it's very useful when doing like attacking or uh, interactions or anything like that. Um, it's very useful for handling that sort of information. You can give it what kind of radius you are looking for. You can also put in a parameterized radius if you wish. Um, the rest of this you can leave pretty much alone apart from inverse conditions. So if you want it to do it when it's uh, not within range, then that's where you want to tick that on. So decorator again. Next we got uh, keeping cone. So this allows you to put in a basically a, a conal degree basically, and it's going to pick a two actors essentially. And the actors you want to keep in in the cone are going to be based upon who you're who's watching who. So for example, cone origin would be self actor. And observe maybe a target actor, okay, and that will keep them in view of that cone. If they're not, then it will um, fail and make them look elsewhere. Okay, keeping cone pretty useful. Um, just lets you check if they're inside a cone. Uh, another good one. We go to a decorator. Is going to be loop. So loop does this condition. Uh, however many times you take it to. Okay, so number of loops, default is three. And basically it detects whether or not that loop has been exceeded. So go through three times and that's it. It'll stop after that. Okay. Now decorators can also be made by you too. So we may say on this chase selector here, uh, decide whether or not we're going to chase us or run away from us based upon a condition on the player that's always changing. 
So for example, I can go up top here and do new decorator. It asks me where I want to name it. So I'm going to call it PT decorator. And then we'll call it uh, check uh, value. No, uh, check. Uh, what should we do? Check scale. Okay. And what we're going to do in here is on the functions override, click on override here, you've got a few options you can choose from. And the most important one is this perform condition check. This is the check that happens to allow it through or not let it through. So on this perform condition check here, we can do various things such as look up any type of value we wish. So let's say I want it to look at the scale of the object that we're trying to chase, that is seen. Okay. So if I go into uh, my variables here and give it a blackboard key of the target and give it the type of blackboard key like so and we're gonna make this editable so we can change it in the uh, behavior tree and I'm gonna take this target out and I'm gonna get value as actor I'm then going to get this scale of this actor. So if I take that, I can scale, and I'll see get actor scale 3D. It's giving me a vector based upon what size they are on the X and Y and Z. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a vector length on this to summarize it all into one single float. So vector length, let me do that. So if your size is 111, the value would be 1. 222, the value would be 2. Okay. So vector length here, we want to check if that is above or below a certain condition. And that condition could be a variable as well. So let's put in vector length here, and we'll put in greater than. Actually, no, let's do less than. There you go, less than, and promote this to a variable. And we'll do this one as um, max acceptable scale. And this boolean here will now go into our return node there. Now this max acceptable scale, I'm gonna make that editable as well and set its default to one. But I'll go a little bit higher, I'll go 1.1. 1 .1, okay. Let's put this onto our behavior tree. Go to our behavior tree and let's chase selector here. We're going to right click on this and do add decorator and we should see our decorator here for check scale click on this and you can see those values that we set to be editable are now appearing in the options we can click on this and on the right hand side we can choose the target we target actor and max acceptance uh, scale here we'll leave as 1.1 so if our character we are set the target actor is below size of 1.1 he should chase us but we also want to make sure this only works if this was in fact valid so let's take the blackboard as value here and type in valid and do in this valid node and chuck that into there okay and if it is valid great move on to this if it's not valid we're going to put in the return node and leave it as false So now, when he's running around, he will ignore me. Now, he'll still register and still see me, as shown by the perception system, but he isn't going to respond to it. Okay. And there you go, that's decorators. And there we go, we've now got decorators covered. In the next episode, we're going to go back to our perception system and take a look at the sound system. So how to make him hear whistles or step footsteps from our player character and for him to go investigating for that sound. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where all my videos are available early from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all. Bye everyone.